Okay, I think I can safely say good afternoon now. Um, so I'm here today to talk with you a little bit about the future of mobile assets because, of course, mobile is growing. It's growing more popular with users. More and more mobile visits are coming to your site. Mobile users' expectations of mobile are growing. Their expectations of what our sites and our apps can do are growing. The only thing that doesn't seem to be growing that much is actually the sites and apps themselves. They're not growing nearly as fast as the expectations are growing of the users who use them. So I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about what Google is trying to do to help you to build better assets faster, particularly for web. I work as a mobile transformation specialist at Google, which means that I consult essentially on strategy with advertisers of Google's who are seeking to transform their businesses on mobile. Maybe their website or their app is not fit for a purpose, or maybe there's something specific about it that they need to help with shifting to mobile, or maybe there's an internal problem that's prevented them strategically from moving forward with mobile. And we try and help with those kinds of things so that you can find the time and the ability to actually make great experiences for your users that are based on what your users actually need and want, not just what you hope they need and want. So I'm going to dive in now and talk a little bit about web versus app. Not versus app, but rather how they're thought of, essentially. So the web has always been associated with reach. It was always about universality being all things to all people, accessible by multiple browsers. And it was very much seen as the dominant platform on desktop. Apps, on the other hand, are about features. It's about feature-rich experiences, it's about that consistent experience, it's about the ability to use the sensors and the services through the APIs and the SDKs that can create these wonderful experiences. I am, of course, talking about native app. I'm not talking about hybrid app. Hybrid app is taking everything that was good about mobile web away from it to put it into an app while adding nothing that was good about apps. So hybrid apps are the worst experience you can put together, and that is essentially when you take your website and you fold it into an app and say, great, we've got an app. What you've got is a poor app, and you also have lost all of those advantages of the web because you've lost the reach as well. What's happening now is that apps are trying to become more like web. Apps are trying to get that reach that web has by doing things like deep linking and indexing and then that re-engagement, trying to remind people that they even have our app. This problem we have with Appnesia, where people download our apps and then completely forget that they have them. And we try and re-engage them and get them back into them. At the same time, web is trying to become more like app. It's trying to get access to those features, the ability to do things like working offline, the ability to do things like push notifications. Web is trying to become more like that. And what I want to talk about with you today is actually this progressive web apps that have been developed by Google to try and make the web richer, more app-like. So through these progressive web apps, what we're trying to do is we are actually trying to make this better. Speed, of course, is a major part of this problem. We hear it all the time from our users. They're unhappy with how fast our websites are loading. They're unhappy with those experiences. When sites are really, really slow, users go away. Of course, there is a point when improving for speed has got a diminishing ROI. But I can promise you, there is nobody in this room that has that problem right now. What we are looking to find is that ideal moment. What do you think is the ideal time for pages to be loading on a mobile device on a 3G connection? Any ideas? Well, people will leave after three seconds, is generally what we get from people. They say after three seconds, they've lost interest and they're willing to work away. Actually, the ideal, the best in class, what you're aiming for is 1,000 milliseconds. Does anyone here know how long 1,000 milliseconds is? Too late, you missed it. That was 1,000 milliseconds. That's how fast we accept, expect our websites to load on mobile devices on a 3G connection. 100 milliseconds is where we expect to see things are actually starting to happen. The website's starting to load. 16 milliseconds is animation. That's 60 and 1,000th of a second. If I touch a link, and after 60 and 1,000th of a second, less than we can even conceive of, nothing has happened, I'm already having a bad experience. But we're building result things for you to create much better experiences for all of your websites so you can live up to all of these expectations. Ideal. So that's what we're doing with progressive web apps. We're trying to help you to create components that you can add to your websites, or you can build complete progressive web apps that will create these fantastic experiences that take that app-rich experience from apps, bring it into the web, also creating much faster experience so we have all of the reach and also all of those fantastic features. Let's look at some examples. So working offline 
is obviously something that we'd love to be able to do. You can't do it with hybrid apps, you can do it with native apps. The ability to work offline will now be possible if you're using progressive web apps connected with what's called a service worker, which sits between your browser and the device and allows you to do things like caching. So that people can actually choose to cache stuff and come back to it later. An example of one of the first sites that did this was the Financial Times a number of years ago when they didn't want to have to pay 30% of their sales to Apple. And so they built a pure HTML5 experience and allowed serious caching. So you, should, you could actually download the entire newspaper onto your phone or your tablet, get on a newspaper, and read it at your leisure. And this will now be capable for all of your websites, for people to be able to browse while they're offline. Push notifications, one of the great things about web uh, or about apps, will also be possible through the web. Again, this is something that goes through the service worker, and the service worker at the moment will work between Chrome and devices. It will not work between Safari and devices, but it will still be a much better experience even on Safari when you use progressive web enhancements. So push notifications, eBay is an example, they're already doing it, where you actually ask people, do you mind if we communicate with you? And then that will actually be, unlike signing for an email and stuff, you can now send them push notifications. Even if their phone is switched off, you can send them push notifications. They don't have to have the browser open, they don't have to have your website open, you can send them push notifications. Install banner, the ability to actually add your icon to the home screen of their device, much like an app, and anytime they hit that, it will just bring them straight back into the website. All very easy to do. You can do that one very easily this evening if you wanted to, if you were able to do it. So working offline is a killer feature, and being able to do all of these things is killer. Let's take an example now, Flipkart, which is a website in India. It's a retail website in India. They used to have a website and an app. And then someone said, 90% of our sales are happening on the app. Why are we bothering to maintain a website? Let's kill the website. Brilliant idea. Not so brilliant idea. A few weeks later, realized they weren't getting any more new users. Now they had to build a new website. So they worked with Google together to build a 100% progressive web app, which they called Flipkart Lite. This is an example of the splash screen. So that 16 milliseconds we were talking about on animation, when you hit a link and you get that white screen, not Flipkart. They have a branded white screen that has their coloring and their logo on it. And you can have that on your website too. Works offline. Add to home screen and launch in full screen. These are all possible. So like that launch in full screen is just like that app experience where when you open it, you don't see a URL bar and all the rest. You just get a full brand experience with all of your brand colors going through, even though this is a website. These are all websites, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. These are not apps. These are websites. Slide navigation, you have 50 frames per second or, um, animation available. So you can do really great interactive design. And like, so where you actually, where you do things where you use animations to identify how all that off the screen space is interacting with what they can see right now. And you can do that with these really fluid motion animation. And then of course, push notifications. In the case of Flipkart, you've put To Kill a Mockingbird into your basket. And now you can send a push notification saying, the price of To Kill a Mockingbird has dropped 24%. You might want to come back and, and check out now. And you can start to do that and re-interact with people and get them back into your website, not an app. Isn't this marvelous? Flipkart has seen that for people who have the Add to Home Screen button on their phones, they're getting a 70% greater conversion rate from new users over people who don't have that on their, on their device, that Add to Home Screen button. And you don't even have to pay Google every time that people come back to your site, because it bypasses and they just get straight into your site. It's like a bookmark, but it's on the home screen of their site. Um, they've also seen engagement going up, 40% increase in people coming back week after week after week to the site. And it's not just that. AliExpress, we've heard about Alibaba. AliExpress is now in Europe. They're a Chinese retailer that has moved over to Europe. Do you know AliExpress, according to SimilarWeb, is the seventh most visited website in the UK in general merchandising? It sits between John Lewis and Marks and Spencer's, two brands you've heard of. Well, AliExpress is sitting in the middle of those. Did you realize? They've used a progressive web app, and what they found was that their conversion rate across all browsers went up 104%, 104% increase in conversion rate across all browsers. And for those of you who are thinking, yeah, I know, but it's basically Chrome and maybe you know, the UC browser, but come on, we were talking about Safari earlier. That's the big one in the UK, isn't it? 82% increase in conversion rate on iOS in the Safari browser with a progressive web app. You don't have to build a pure web app you can take some of the elements and just add them on to enhance, to progressively enhance your experiences, to create much better, faster experiences for your cu customers, but then you can add all of these features to also give that feature-rich experience as well. There is a catch, though. In order to be able to take these on, you must have a secure website, 100% secure. 
That means that it's much safer for users that when they come in, all of this information is secure and it's very hard for people to hack. And that's got to be done. You have to have secure websites, but you have to have them anyway, because that's all the carrot stuff, and there's stick stuff happening too. I don't know if you're aware, but in the latest version of Chrome that was pushed, Chrome version 50, we took away the ability to use the geolocation API on non-secure pages. So for any of you who have a store locator on a non-secure page, and you have that little button that says, find my nearest store, that won't work anymore on Chrome if you're not on a secure page. And having read the release notes just a few weeks ago for Safari, they are in the next push, they're taking it away from Safari as well. So you will have to have secure pages throughout your website. So please do move with the times, build secure websites, build these progressive web apps into your, app, into your sites to make much better experiences for your users, to drive faster experiences, and much greater sales. Thank you.